Hi everyone, welcome to Tweetorial part three. Today we'll be discussing campaign setup. Thank you all for joining again. And if you're just tuning in, we'd love to introduce ourselves again. My name is Mackenzie Purcell. I'm an account manager on the customer success team here at Twitter. And we're so excited to have you here with us today. I'll pass things over to Parissa to let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Parissa. I'm a client success specialist. And as Mackenzie mentioned, we're really excited to have you back with us for tutorial part three. Awesome, thanks Parissa. Um, so just what we'll cover and what we have already covered in this series. Um, today we'll be going over campaign setup, but if you missed the last two tutorial sessions, you can still tune in. The first one we discussed Twitter superpower, the second, we discuss top products. And then the last one and final one will be campaign optimizations coming up. So then just to recap what we went over last tutorial, because I know it was a lot of information and I just wanna make sure that everyone kind of understands what we went over. But um, as you can see here, it is the full funnel marketing strategy. Um, so we went over the core and premium products. So deciding your objective is the first step. Are, you, are your goals to drive mass awareness, promote engagement, or funnel conversions? So keeping customers engaged through the funnel, choosing the right products is imperative for launching a successful campaign. And as I said before, disclaimer, these are not confined to just one phase of the funnel. Um, here you can see the objectives and products that align with each phase of the funnel. This is just a super helpful slide, so feel free to use this when you're setting up your campaign. And then the agenda for today and our tutorial today will be, um, I'll be going over targeting, Carissa will be going over bidding, and then down the road we'll have Sal come in, who's our guest speaker today, and he will be discussing creatives. So then just to kick things off um, with targeting, I, we decided to break these down into three different um, three different columns, just so you have an idea of what the industry basics are, the Twitter specific, and then custom audiences. So just to kick things off, um, industry basics. So Twitter offers location targeting, demographics, interest, device, and keywords that I'm sure you are aware of other pro other platforms have that as well, but very Twitter specific. And um, what I think is so powerful about Twitter is you can actually um, discover and plan for events. So let's say a sporting event is going on and you wanna target users that are watching that event, you can do that on Twitter. You can also join in on conversations that users are participating in, which is super powerful and an easy way to kind of um, engage with your target audience. Movies and TV shows, um, you can engage with fans of specific TV shows or movies. Follower lookalikes, you could also target similar followers of any username. And then um, custom audiences, these are lists, so an email or mobile phone numbers that you can upload yourself. You can also target based off of website visitors, so off of that pixel, and then mobile app users. And then I'll hand things over to Parissa to take you through bidding. Perfect, thanks Mackenzie. So what is a bid? A bid is the amount you're willing to pay per action for any objective. A question we get asked often is which bid type should we choose? It's important to set your bid based on the value you place for each new engagement. Your bid factors into how well your campaign performs, so put thought into how much a user's engagement really means for your business. Keep in mind that your bid should match your targeting size. So if your campaigns are targeting very specific audiences, you may have to increase your bid in order to serve. As an example, advertisers tar targeting specific geographic regions like zip codes or cities may need to bid more in order to win the same number of auctions as advertisers targeting less specific audiences since there are less users in that audience. 
You do have various options, but we recommend as best practice to utilize auto bid. This will ensure that your bid is competitive within the auction and will auto fit to your campaign budget. With an exception to mobile app campaigns, mids, bids can be adjusted at any time, so feel free to go back in and adjust how you see best fit. Perfect. A different, a, an additional part of the ad score is the quality score, and quality score is determined by taking the factors into account, resonance, relevance, and recency. The questions you should ask yourself when creating, when going through camp creating your campaign are, does the tweet copy make you want to click on it to find out more? Is the tweet copy relevant to the audience that you're targeting? To win your auctions and maximize your campaign success, your ads must have a good quality score and bid. A very vital, important part of campaign setup is your creatives. I'm going to be introducing Twitter ad specialist and creator of several viral tweets, Sal Matos, to go over our next portion. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sal, as Parissa mentioned. Uh, I've been working at Twitter for a couple of years now. Um, I work with advertisers across all shapes and sizes, all verticals, from big name brands that you probably recognize all the way down to kind of the smaller mom and pop shops or kind of the individual accounts who are just trying to promote their, biz uh, their personal business. So the best practices that we're going to be talking about today uh, as it regards to creative are really applicable across every vertical uh, and across every business type. Um, a little fun fact about me before we get started. Um, one of my favorite Twitter accounts to follow, and I highly recommend you do the same, is Pete Zaroll. It's actually just the Totina's uh, Pete Zaroll's uh, Twitter account. Um, they're really amusing, even if you're not into Pete Zaroll's or, you know, you don't like to eat those. It's just a really fun account um, with lots of, like, really good meme-worthy content. It's kind of my favorite type of thing to post, just in case you want to give a follow. That's usually what I'm sharing is kind of the weird stuff. So all of the best practices that we're going to talk about today all revolve around this core question. How do you ensure that your tweets will capture the attention and drive business results? So to do this, you're going to want to focus on three rules. Number one, keep it short and simple. Number two, focus on product and people. And number three, Use visual cues strategically to drive home your message. Now we're gonna break down each one of these into different parts with more specific actions that you can take. So let's start with short and simple. Uh, when it comes to being short and simple, you wanna make sure to grab attention quickly. 70% of total impact for key brand metrics is made within the first three seconds of viewing. Now you really wanna think about Twitter as a, a unique platform compared to some other digital platforms that I'm sure you're advertising on. Remember, people are scrolling fast, they're following a ton of accounts and they're absorbing a lot of information all at once. So the amount of time that you have to really like grab uh, their attention and make an impact is really brief. So those three seconds and all of our research has found that to be the sweet spot. And keep it short. You wanna make sure that if you're running video that you keep it to less than 15 seconds uh, for maximum branding, message recall, and overall response. Now, there's sure there's plenty of examples of video on Twitter that's longer than 15 seconds um, that does well and performs well, but um, as a general rule, you wanna be thinking shorter, not longer. Um, it's also really important to think about this in terms of what types of products you're using. So for in-feed video, as a general rule, keep it less than 15. But if you're running pre-roll video uh, as part of our Amplify program, that video is skippable after six seconds. So really thinking about how can I put all of my brand message, all of my product information in those first six seconds before people have a chance to move away from your ad. That's really important. Um, and make sure that your tweet copy is aligned with your video. 
you want to keep your copies short and sweet. Less than 100 characters is the ideal. Um, you also want to make sure that the copy uh, is really engaging and is really pulling people in. We've actually done eye-catching studies that show, compared to all other digital platforms, when people look at um, a, a, an ad, a digital ad on Twitter, they actually pay a lot of attention to the copy. You know, Twitter is words. It's about the messages and the thoughts that people want to put out into the world. So people are more tuned to actually looking at the caption, much more so than they do on other platforms. So you want to make sure that your caption is doing as much heavy lifting as your video or your images are. You also want to play around with formatting, you know, thinking about how can I use spacing in an effective way? How can I play around with language uh, in a really interesting way to grab attention? That's just as important as having a really impactful video or image. Um, you also want to make sure to use hashtags effectively, but you don't want to overdo it. Hashtags aren't like jewelry. OK, so you don't want to like overload. You know, you want to make sure that you're clear and concise. Uh, you also want to make sure to be specific uh, with your tweet copy. If you want people to sign up for something, make sure to tell them to sign up. If you want them to buy something, make sure to tell them to buy. If you want them to take a quiz, make sure to tell them, take our quiz. Um, you just wanna be as clear as possible um, to make sure that users aren't getting lost in their feeds. So moving on to rule number two, focusing on products and people. So obviously, if you wanna start with the product. Starting with your product leads to the most positive interest and behavior. A 24% increase in positive interest and a 34% increase in click uh, in click intent, excuse me, when you focus on the product first. Now, what does this mean? That means if you have a tangible product, right? Let's say you're selling water bottles. Make sure that you feature that right at the top of the video so that people can see your product. Um, if you have something that's more of a service or a different type of product that you can't necessarily show an item for, just make sure that at the beginning of the video, you're making it very clear through your visual messaging what your service is and what it is you're all about so that users know what they're watching. And then show a human connection to your product or service. When videos show a positive human interaction, there's a 40% increase in overall response to the ad. Now, this can be obviously a video that features people prominently, or it can be as simple as this great ad from Glass and Ladder Company. As you can see, there's just a pair of human hands um, holding the products, and that's really all you need. You wanna make sure that people see that your product or service is relevant to their real life. So when they log off, they put down their phone, that it's something that they can actually carry with them into their real lives and that they can see themselves interacting with. Um, and the best way to do that is to just show a smiling face or a pair of hands. It's really that simple. Uh, and last but not least, bring the brand back. Uh, make sure to show your brand for at least half the video, if not more. And you can see a positive impact in branding and messaging. A 25% increase in brand recall and a 21% increase in message recall when your brand is present consistently for more than 50% of the video. Um, this means that if you're running any sort of narrative stories, make sure that we're constantly being reminded, what is the brand? What is the product? What is the message that you're trying to have users take away? Now, something that is, ties into this really uh, uh, in, in a major way is going into rule number three, which is talking about visual cues. Make uh, a way to make sure that your brand is present throughout your video is to have a clear logo placement. When your video has a clear logo placement, there's a 30% increase in unaided brand recall. Now, the best place to put your logo uh, or some other signifier of your brand, it's actually in the corners of your video. So think about that real estate. It's really important. Those top corners can be really impactful because it allows your logo to be present throughout the entire video and you're not blocking any of the main action of your video, of those amazing assets that I'm sure you've created. And if you're running captions, you're not blocking those either. Now, speaking of captions, make sure to use them. Um, it seems simple, but closed captions and text overlays actually lead to a 28% increase uh, in view times. Uh, now, these can be uploaded uh, via SRT files directly in our system, or you can embed them directly into the video, whichever option you prefer. Now, there's a couple of reasons why captions are really important. Um, besides helping carry along the message of your ad, 
Um, you have to remember that Twitter has about an 80% mobile first audience. Now that means that when they're scrolling on their phones, um, they're not gonna be hearing the audio right away unless they click on the video to expand it. So you wanna make sure that you're not losing anything in translation during that time when they first see your ad and when they uh, either scroll away or click to expand it. So having those captions will help make sure that your message is still coming through. It's also an accessibility issue. Now everyone wants to make sure that your brand's message is as accessible to as wide an audience as possible. So you wanna make sure to use captions effectively to make sure that you're being inclusive of people who might not be able to hear the audio on your video or who might have other reasons for not being able to expand and listen or if they have their settings changed for a certain reason. You wanna make sure that you're still reaching them um, in as many ways as you can. So I know that was a lot, but um, this is a checklist that you can use to make sure that you're going through those three rules and that you're not leaving anything out when you're putting together your creative strategy. So to recap, rule number one, keep it short and simple. Ask yourself, is your message clear? Are you grabbing attention right off the bat? Is your video less than 15 seconds? Is your copy less than 100 characters? And does that copy align with your video or your image creative. Rule number two, focus on product and people. Show your product right away. Don't waste any time. And make sure to show a positive human interaction with the product, and that can be as simple as just a hand holding your object. And last but not least, make sure to feature your product or brand in at least half the video. And an easy way to do that is with rule number three visual cues. Uh, make sure your visible logo is uh, there in the first few seconds and keep it there for at least 50% of the video, if not more. And up in those corners is the best spot. And ask yourself if you're reinforcing your message with captions. This is both thinking about Twitter as a unique platform with a sound off strategy, but also thinking about how you can be inclusive of all different types of people. Thank you so much, Sal. As you mentioned, I also have a few advertise several advertisers who use this as a checklist every time they run on Twitter ads to make sure they're incorporating each of these components into their campaigns to have success when launching their campaigns. So thank you for this helpful resource. Next time on tutorial part four, we're going to be focused on campaign optimization. So we'll be going over the do's and don'ts around hashtags, best practices on around tweet copy, helpful ads manager tools, and how to use various uh, ad formats to really increase your reach and awareness. And we'll be going over several other topics, so make sure you tune in. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you next time. Bye, thank you.